we got a uh, uh, slap name uh, mysteries is uh, uh, second channel or alternative channel at the green children of wool pit. Let's see what this is about. <clears throat> In the annals of English folklore, one of the most enduring and perplexing tales yeah, is that of the Green still, Children of Woolpit. Reaction the story, is. set in the 12th century, tells of the mysterious you know, appearance practice, of two though. children with green-tinged skin in the village of Woolpit, that. Suffolk. Despite their ostensibly alien oh, appearance and unfamiliar Talk language, the two children were recognizably human, sparking speculation not, and intrigue you know, that persists to this Say. day. In the small take, English time. village of Wolfpit, nestled in the county of Suffolk, an extraordinary story like began to unfold during the reign of King Stephen in the 12th century. The tale, passed down through generations, was yeah, preserved in the writings of two notable chroniclers, William of Newburgh and Ralph of Coggeshall. According to their chronicles, two unusual children, a brother and a sister, seemingly appeared out of nowhere by one of the village's wolf pits, from which wool pit derives its name. Their skin bore a green hue, unlike anything the villagers had ever seen. Their clothes were made of unfamiliar materials, and they spoke an unknown language that no one in wool pit could understand. Confusion and curiosity naturally ensued amongst the locals as they tried to decipher the origin of these mysterious children. The bewildering pair brought with them an air of mystery that pervaded the village, inciting whispers of conjecture and baffled glances. Equally puzzling was the children's refusal to eat. Despite apparent hunger, they rejected all types of food offered to them, further deepening the intrigue surrounding their sudden appearance. That is, until they came across raw, broad beans, which they eagerly consumed. This unusual dietary preference seemed to underline the fact that these children were indeed strangers in a strange land. Gradually, the children adapted to different foods and even lost their green complexion. However, the boy, weakened by the new environment, too failed to beans thrive and passed away. Damn. The girl, however, managed to survive and over the years learned to speak English. As the girl grew older, she relayed the story of her origin to the villagers, her account of her homeland further fueling the mystery. She referred to it as St. Martin's Land, a place with no sun but a light similar to twilight, and all its inhabitants were of the same green color as she and her brother had been. The girl weaved an intriguing narrative, one that was almost otherworldly in its essence. She recollected that one day, while they were tending to their father's livestock, they stumbled upon a cavern. Led by the sound of bells, they ventured through the cavern. However, when they emerged, they were met with an onslaught of unfamiliar sensations. Instead of the twilight that shrouded their homeland, they were bathed in the bright sunlight of Woolpit. The children, disoriented and scared, had unwittingly crossed a boundary into a world starkly different from their own. In her adulthood, the green girl, according to some accounts, came to be known as Agnes Barr, signaling her successful assimilation into 12th century English society. This marked an extraordinary transformation, considering her enigmatic origins and the unconventional circumstances under which she had first appeared in Woolpit. Agnes's integration into society was further exemplified by her marriage to a man of considerable status, Richard Barr, a royal official hailing from King's Lynn. This union was not just a testament to Agnes's successful social integration, but also served to further distance her from her inexplicable past. Despite her peculiar origins, it seems that the girl was able to carve out a normal life for herself in the strange new world. However, specific details about her life post-marriage are not well documented. There are no further narratives or records that provide insight into her life as Richard's wife, whether they had children or what ultimately became of her. 
The anonymity and normality she seems to have found after her unusual childhood only adds to the enduring mystery and intrigue of this tale. It can only be inferred that she led a relatively ordinary life as a 12th century woman in England, blending into society despite her extraordinary origins. The captivating narrative of the green children of Woolpit continues to puzzle historians and the public alike, given the many enigmas it presents. Even after yeah, centuries have passed since the tale first emerged, numerous really aspects story. of the story remain shrouded in mystery. A plethora of theories have been proposed over the years in an attempt to unravel the truth behind this perplexing tale. These theories, while varied and often speculative, each endeavor to shed light on the peculiar circumstances surrounding these children, their unearthly hue, their initial inability to consume ordinary food, their foreign language, and their account of an otherworldly homeland. Today, some believe that the tale is purely allegorical, symbolizing the emergence of prehistoric inhabitants into the newly Norman-populated Britain. The strange language and the green color representing their lack of sophistication and learning, with the girls' eventual assimilation reflecting their inevitable integration into the new society. However, in the 12th century, England was steeped in a rich tapestry of folklore, superstitions, and religious beliefs. The supernatural was an intrinsic part of daily life, with many believing in the existence of creatures like elves, sprites, and other mystical entities. Oh, Therefore, crazy. several more fantastic theories concerning the origin of the green children of Woolpit also exist. One suggests that the children were changelings left in place of human children by fairies or other supernatural entities, yep, as per Celtic shit. folklore. In the more outlandish interpretations of the green children of Woolpit's origin, some conjecture the children were not of our world at all, but rather extraterrestrial beings who had mistakenly found themselves on Earth. This hypothesis posits that the siblings I were residents there, of a really distant know. planet, characterized Ooh, by unique atmospheric conditions that could have accounted for their peculiar green complexion. Alternatively, there are proponents of the hollow earth theory who suggest the children might have emerged from the interior of our own planet. This hidden realm could have unique environmental That's conditions resulting it, in the children's green hue. Another popular and more grounded hypothesis argues that the children were Flemish immigrants, possibly from a nearby village called Fornham St. Martin, where a Flemish community resided. This theory could also explain why the language the children spoke was unrecognizable to the townsfolk of Woolpit, as they might have actually been speaking Dutch. As for their green skin, this could have been the result of what we now know as hypochromic anemia, a condition caused by malnutrition. Historically, hypochromic anemia was referred to as chlorosis or green sickness due to the unique green greenish sickness. hue sometimes observed in patient skin. Besides this distinctive coloration, individuals with this condition often exhibit symptoms such as fatigue, shortness of breath, indigestion, headaches, and an inconsistent or reduced appetite, perhaps explaining the children's initial aversion to food. As this theory attempts to solve the mystery of the green children of Wolf Pit using more scientific means, there has actually been several medically documented occurrences of unusually colored people throughout history. The Blue Fugates, also known as the Blue People of Kentucky, for example, were an Appalachian family with a very unique genetic trait that gave them blue skin. This rare condition, which can be traced back to the Fugate family that settled near Hazard, Kentucky in 1820, was caused by a disease called methemoglobinemia. Methemoglobinemia is a blood disorder in which an abnormal amount of methemoglobin, a form of hemoglobin, is produced. Hemoglobin is responsible for transporting oxygen in the body and is generally red due to the iron contained within it. However, when methemoglobin is present, the blood becomes bluish or chocolate brown, hence the skin appears blue. The family story came to light in the early 1960s when several members were studied by Dr. Madison K. Wine, a hematologist at the University of Kentucky's medical clinic. After extensive research and blood testing, Dr. K. Wan was able to trace the family's unique condition to methemoglobinemia. Though the exact cause behind the green children's skin color remains a mystery, the story of the Blue Fugates illustrates that sometimes rare anomalies can occur. Could it be that the green children of Woolpit suffered from some sort of similar affliction? 
tale of the no, green children of Woolpit is an intriguing narrative, case. steeped in mystery and conjecture. Whether seen as alien visitors, disoriented immigrants, or a scientific anomaly, their tale offers a tantalizing peek into the ways in which our ancestors tried to make sense of the unknown and continues to inspire our curiosity and imagination today. Yeah. While we may never learn the whole truth behind the story of the green children of Woolpit, the tale, tinged with the fantastic, the earthly, and the uncanny, remains a fascinating relic of a time gone by, a strange green thread woven into the fabric of human history. Nice video, man. I said I wasn't, you know, there, but I mean, if this story is true, then if this story is true, man, I don't know, but man. It really makes you think, though. 